Hello and welcome to another episode of the Pen Fan series. In this series, we ask three questions to pen fans. And in this case, it will be the one and only turn from Giants Pens. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, make sure to do that right now because then you won't miss out on a video anymore. Welcome to this episode, turn. I have three questions for you, and the first one I will ask straight away because we all want to know, how did you get into Fountain Vents? Oh, thank you, Joost. Um, this is a question that I uh, don't get a lot, but a story that I tell uh, fairly often, actually. Um, because for me, it, it started uh, when I was fairly young, because um, when I was uh, around the age of seven, I was diagnosed with uh, what they call youth arthritis. Um, and uh, which meant that my my whole body at a certain point, but mostly my fingers, uh, my back, and, and a few other joints in my body would get inflamed because my own immune system is attacking my my own body. Um, let's first make it clear: it's not as bad now as it was then. I have nothing to complain about, um, but it used to be. Well, I, I could say fairly bad. I used to be in a wheelchair and I couldn't write, and uh, at certain days talking was difficult because my jaw would be inflamed. Um, so that made things a bit difficult, but also writing fairly difficult. Holding a pen is, is not very fun, especially a ballpoint pen when you have to apply pressure, um, to write. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a weird movement. Your fingers don't like it. So it's, it's a force you, you get cramps. I think everybody who has used ballpoints knows the feeling. Um, and while I used, uh, laptops for a long time to get my school work done, uh, at a certain point, I was just completely done with electronics. Um, while I am still very young, I don't, uh, I, I didn't belong to the all the people now, all the kids now that continue to use laptops. Uh, I, we all wrote, and I was the only one sitting there with a with a laptop. I felt weird and left out. And uh, at a certain point, you, I just also wanted to write, and things were going a bit better. I felt a bit better, and to. Um, to, to commemorate that at a certain point after having tried the, the, um, pencils with, with grips on them and gel pens and, uh, anything and everything. My parents went, well, I th we think you're old enough now at about the age of what would it be 12, 13, um, you are getting your first fountain pen because they used fountain pens for their entire lives. And that was a game changer. I, I can still remember vividly the first time that I, I wrote and after two pages, two A4s of writing, instead of having to stop writing because of the pain in my hands, I didn't feel any pain. Um, so that was, that was the immediate th thought of, wow, this is, this is amazing. Um, that I, it was a Parker urban. That was actually my very first, uh, first found and pen. Um, I used it until it broke. Uh, just, just the pieces, uh, the, the lacquer is gone. I still have it, um, but it's uh, it, it was done. When it broke or when I didn't feel like using it anymore, I went back to the gel pens for a while, um, which worked fine. Uh, Pilots uh, has done a really great thing with their with their gel pens, and, but they were very expensive. If you wrote as much as a, as a, um, a high schooler does, and they were just uh, mm -hmm. insane. Um, so... That's when I did some research myself uh, on different pens, on different things, uh, and quickly came to founder pens again. Um, and then uh, at about the age of 16, I bought a uh, Lamy Safari, which uh, uh, fit really well. I was again amazed by, by how easily I could write and how, uh, how comfortable it was to, to, uh, to use. Um, but it was a black pen. I used black ink in it. And at a certain point you go, ah, well, I also want a red one for correcting. So I bought another Lamy Safari, but mm -hmm. instead of a medium nib, which was the first one, I bought a fine nib to think, you know, if I want a different size or whatever, I could do that. And it wrote so, so differently from the first one, it, 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 a world of difference. And that immediately I was just amazed, well, if the difference between these two pens is, uh, is this large, um, what what happens when I go uh, uh, to even more pens? Also, I, funny story. I think the first one I ever bought was at Appleboom, so the first Lamy Safari. Uh, so uh, thank you, Joost. Um, 
so, but, um, you know, I went, I got a Lamy CP1, which is a very small, small pen and you know, I have fairly large hands. So I don't know why I did that, but, uh, I, then I, that one wrote way differently as well. I got it with a medium nib. So I had two medium nibs and even they wrote differently. And then you started doing more research and, uh, why does, do they write differently? And, uh, and what can we expect from founder pens? Um, and then from three founder pens, you go to 10 and from 10, you go to 15 to 25. And at a certain point, uh, the people that, uh, luckily on the content in Tilburg started to recognize me uh, as I was there uh, fairly often. And I also kind of knew the entire web shop out of the top of my head. Um, uh, so I started working there uh, and from then everything just went well further down the rabbit hole, but I would say uphill, uh, down the rabbit hole, um, uh, because, uh, my knowledge got more, I got more interested in, in well, more expensive pens. Uh, the first expensive pen I got was a Namiki. Um, Nippon art, which uh, blew me away, both in writing experience and in, uh, in in that it wasn't just a pen anymore, but also a small piece of art. Um, and from then on, you don't just appreciate writing with it, but also uh, appreciating the craftsmanship, the the way it's made, the materials, the the, the feeling, and not just the feeling of the pen, but the feelings you get with the pen. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, that's kind of how it happened to, um, or how I got into pens and how I decided that it was a thing for me. What a wonderful story. Thank you, Turn. Um, and after that you decided like, okay, you know, all these pens that are available right now, they're not for me. Let's make my own pens. So now you are creating your own pens. And that's also about the second question. What is the most difficult part of producing a fountain pen? This is a, a, a great question. Um, I think there's multiple ways you could look at this. You could look at the three parts of a founder pen that you make, the cap, the body, and the section, uh, or the individual steps that you have to take. Um, I think the most difficult part to do perfectly um, is and will always be the finishing of the pen. Um, you can quite quickly make a pen that works well, but it's more difficult to make it also look really good. Um, sanding and polishing is, is well, it may look very, very easy and it, it is very easy, it's, but it's, it's still kind of a technique or a process that you really need to figure out. And some makers have it immediately and others like me had to really spend quite a few hours to, uh, to, to make everything work. Um, so I would pick finishing if we talk about the process, but if we talk about the parts, it's the section. Um, mm -hmm. all of the threads have to be qu done quite well. Um, we used to always have the problem that the, the nips would be very uh, tight in there or that you would get heat effects and then it wouldn't really fit anymore. Um, and while with the body and the cap, you usually have a bit of more material, a bit of leeway with the section, you, they're very thin. You, so you only have a little bit of space, so they break sometimes not anymore, but they used to do it a lot. <laughs> All right. All right. That's a great answer. Um, let's move forward to our last question because this, that is third. What is your top tip for someone using fountain pens? Hmm. I think that many people in the fountain pen world, myself included at the beginning, definitely you get, you get stuck in a, well, not stuck. I wouldn't say, but you, you get a certain type, you get a certain type of fountain pens that you like. I like my, my cigar pen. I like my, my flat top. I like it. Um, I like smaller pens. I like bigger pens. Um, but my taste over the years has changed a lot. Uh, it has gone from, from average to small back to large. Uh, it has gone from, from cigar shapes to, um, flat tops to weird shapes. I now I just like doing weird things. Um, and I would really, uh, of course you have to do what you like, but don't forget to try things, hold pens, uh, feel them figure out if you'd like smaller nibs, larger nibs, uh, not directly in, in nip width, but also in direct sizing, a, a Yo number five versus a block number eight or a, a Pelican M thousand nib is so such a different feeling. Try different things. You, you won't know what you like in the end. I think that's an amazing tip. Turn. Thank you so much for this, uh, session together with you for the pen fan series. I really appreciate it. 
And everybody that's watching us right now, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And next week, we have another episode with another pen fan. Bye-bye.